software worksheet that I gave you. But first of all, let me tell you what a limit is, okay? Limits describe the behavior of the y values of a function as the x values get close to a particular value. So this is your limit notation. You read this as the limit as x approaches c of f of x is l, okay? The limit as x approaches c of f of x is l, or equals l, either way, okay? <clears throat> now, um, when you're actually asked to evaluate the limit, that c will be a number, f of x will be a function, and l is your answer, that's going to be a number. So l is the y value that the function is getting super close to as the x values are getting closer and closer to some number c. Alright, now, I really don't anticipate them giving you a super difficult limit on the exam, so we're going to look at just kind of some of those simpler ones. We are going to look at a few of the more difficult ones, uh, but we're going to focus on the simpler ones today. Uh, the, those being, most limits can be evaluated by what we call direct substitution, meaning you just plug in that x value into the function and you get the answer. Alright, so let's look at number one, okay? Number one says the limit as x approaches five halves of negative x plus four. So literally all we're going to do is we are going to plug in negative five over two for x. And since I'm adding it to four, I'm gonna show you how to evaluate all these limits uh, by hand. Uh, but remember on the final exam, it's completely calculated active. So you can use a calculator. I'm just showing you how you have to do them in calculus because these are going to be calculator inactive questions in calculus. So five halves, I'm adding four. Be helpful if it was over two. So eight over two is equal to four. So this answer would be three over two. That is the limit of this function as the x values are getting closer and closer to five halves. The y values are approaching three halves. Now, if x was approaching some other number, we would get some different answer. If x were approaching 3, then the limit would be 1. Okay? So it's it's value specific. But it approaches a different Well, technically this one can touch it. Um, we're going to look at some functions around holes and vertical asymptotes and stuff, so your function won't actually equal that value, but it's, it's what it's getting very, very close to. But in this case, when x is 5 halves, then the y is 3 halves. So, I mean, it's approaching it, it's equaling it, whatever way you want to look at it. It is, that, that's what it is. Okay? Now, number 2 is kind of weird, so I wanted to show you one like this. The function is just the constant 2. The y value is always 2, so it doesn't matter what x value I'm approaching, this limit is always going to be 2, because that's what the function is. If the function is 2, then that's just a horizontal line at y equals 2, that's our function. The y value is always 2, doesn't matter what the x value is, so the limit is always going to be 2. Now, trig functions. These are very common uh, questions that they will ask about trig functions. So the limit as x approaches negative 2 pi over 3 of negative 2 cotangent of x. So here's how I would approach this one. Okay, Cotangent, leave the negative 2 in front. Cotangent is cosine over sine. You need to know that. So it's the cosine of negative 2 pi over 3 over the sine of negative 2 pi over 3. So remember how we evaluate trig functions. It's an over 3 angle. So I've just got to think about, okay, if I'm at pi over 3, that's the steeper angle, so the cosine is going to be 1 half, and the sine is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. Now, i got to decide the sines. Okay, so now i got to figure out what quadrant. Negative 2 pi over 3, if we think about it, 2 thirds, is a little bit less than 1, 
So in the negative direction, that means we're going to be here in the third quadrant. So x values are negative and y values are negative. So we've got a negative, we've got three negatives being multiplied by each other, so that's going to give us a negative. Um, I'm going to keep the two in front for right now. I'm going to flip my fraction, my bottom fraction over and multiply. So those twos cancel. So I have negative two over the square root of three. And if we rationalize that, that gives us negative two square roots of three over three. In pre-calc, we rationalize. The good news is in calculus, when some of y'all get there, they don't rationalize. So the answer would be negative 2 over the square root of 3. But I'm pretty sure on the final exam, they're going to rationalize it for you guys. Okay? Questions about that? Okay. Those are the easy ones. Now, we can, um, they also like piecewise functions. And this is actually what I've seen um, on the final exam. Uh, are some piecewise functions and one-sided limits and one-sided limits. So one-sided limits analyze the value on one side of an x value. So either you're looking at, okay, we're approaching this x value from the left or we're approaching this x value from the right. So let's look at number 17. This says the limit as x approaches 1, this is not a typo, that little negative comes after the 1, that means from the left. Okay, that little negative right there means from the left. It's not talking about negative 1, it's saying as we're approaching 1 from the left. So, here's our function, it's a piecewise function. So it says uh, it's negative x squared plus 2x minus 2 when x is less than 1. So this is talking about the left side. The other piece is the right side of our function when x is greater than or equal to 1. So if we're evaluating this limit from the left, then we are going to plug 1 into the first piece. f of x equals, we're going to plug in 1 into the first piece. Now notice that negative in front of the x squared goes in front of the 1 squared. So that's going to give us negative 1 plus 2 and minus 2 cancel. So the answer here is negative 1. The left-handed limit as we approach 1 of this function is negative 1. The right-handed limit, we didn't ask for that, but I just want to mention this. If we plug in 1, we get 1 half minus 9 halves, that's negative 8 halves, that would be negative 4. The right-sided limit would be negative 4. If you were curious. Yes, ma'am? Uh huh. Okay, we're gonna. I'm pretty sure I have an example of that in a minute. Uh, we'll talk about that. Okay, good question. Though. Okay, uh, let's also look at number 21. A piece, or not a piece wise, absolute value function. We've got an absolute value function here. Uh, over what looks to be the same function, but it's not, okay? The absolute value of negative x plus 1 over negative x plus 1, you can just cancel those because the absolute value on the top. But remember, when we did absolute value functions, we can write absolute value functions as piecewise functions. But there's a little detail you have to remember when there is a negative coefficient with the x, okay? You've got to factor that out first. So I'm not dealing with the limit yet. Okay, right now I'm just simplifying my function. I have to factor out the negative 1 from that x. When we do that, 
the absolute value of negative 1 is 1, so this is really what our function looks like. Uh, it's really 3 times the absolute value of x minus 1 over negative x plus 1. Okay, so those are the same functions. If you don't believe me, you can graph both of them and you'll see that they are the exact same function. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write my function here as a piecewise function. We did this a long time ago. Remember, with absolute values for the left side, we change uh, the signs. Okay, we change the signs of what's inside the absolute value. That is when x is less than 1. And for the right side, we keep everything the same. Remember doing that a little bit? Left side we change the signs, right side we keep everything the same. So guess what? This simplifies. For that left side, we're going to get positive 3. We can just cancel those out. For the right side, if we factor a negative out of the bottom, then we can cancel them out. So we get negative 3 when x is greater than or equal to 1. Now, if you don't believe me that this big complicated, well, not complicated, but kind of complicated function right here breaks down to just 3 and negative 3, let's graph it. Okay? Uh, so, we need to put parentheses, 3, absolute value, if you forgot what that is, math, num, absolute value, negative x plus 1, close parentheses for the absolute value, close parentheses around the numerator, divided by, got to put the negative x plus 1 in parentheses. Check out what, whoops, let me fix my window. Okay, here's that function. Now, this vertical line's not really there, I don't know why it wraps it, but... Our y value is positive 3 until we get here to 1, and then also it jumps down to negative 3 um, after 1. That's exactly what this piecewise function right here describes. So, if they ask us for the limit as we're approaching 1 from the right, so we're coming from the right side, what y value are we at? On the right side of this function, what y value are we at? Negative 3. Negative 3. Okay, we're at negative 3. So this limit is negative 3. If it has a plus, we look at it from the right side. If that said x approaches 1 from the left, then the answer would be positive 3. Okay. So again, this is what you would have to do in calculus. You'd have to do this completely by hand. Figure all this out. You factor it, right? That's a piecewise function. You factor it and everything. But your exam, calculator active, graph it. Okay, graph it. But I wanted to show you the algebra behind it as well. What? This little sign right here. If it has a plus or a minus after the number, then you're just looking at one side of that number. If there's nothing there, then you're looking at it from both sides. Mm, not two answers. We'll, we're we're going to talk about that here in just a second. Yes. 